love running. I love running. So on the bottom of the foot are two little floating bones that most people will never uh, hear about unless they develop a problem with them. Those little floating bones are known as sesamoids. And just like the kneecap, the sesamoids are free floating bones. They have their own special grooves on the bottom of the metatarsal head. So this is an actual first metatarsal bone. The bottom of it here, notice these grooves here. That's where the sesamoids are supposed to reside. And they do for a little while. If your toe is in natural alignment, those sesamoids will stay in their grooves. And what I mean by natural alignment is if the big toe stays in direct line with the metatarsal like it's supposed to, those little floating bones will stay directly under. However, most footwear at age two or three starts to pull our floating bones out of alignment. And it does that primarily by one deforming force that's known as a tapering toe box. In other words, shoes that get narrower from the ball of the foot outward. When you, when you wear that kind of footwear for a long period of time, the big toe learns to stay in that configuration, and so do the floating bones. So if we take an x-ray of the top of a person's foot who's been in that kind of a position for a long time, we will see that the inner floating bone is no longer under the bottom of the bone, and the outer sesamoid bone will oftentimes be shifted over under the middle of the bone, or worse yet, be occupying the space that other sesamoid was supposed to. So if you have sesamoiditis, is the, is the collective term for irritated sesamoids, three things that you really want to understand. Most important thing is if your big toe is not spread wider than the ball of your foot, your sesamoids are not going to be lined up in their groove properly. Second thing that irritates sesamoids is if you wear an elevated heel on your shoes, that automatically forces your body weight onto the ball of your foot. And the higher the elevated heel, the worse sesamoid irritation you're going to get. So you want to avoid elevated heels. You want to avoid tapering toe boxes. But you also desperately want to have your own protective fat under your sesamoids. So if you're wearing a shoe that has a toe spring added to it, which most athletic shoes do, your protective fat will no longer be under your sesamoids. It will be too far forward to protect them, and you'll directly traumatize your sesamoids. So uh, ideally, we want the heel level, toes spread wider than the ball of the foot, and toes flat and level against the support surface. That keeps your sesamoids under the bone where they belong. That keeps your fat pad back in under those sesamoids where it belongs. And it allows all the little muscles around that joint to function properly as nature intended. Early on, you're probably going to get an x-ray of that person to find out what the, what the shape of the sesamoids are. Secondary to that, like we mentioned, we want to know where the, where the position of the sesamoids are. Many times, some form of arch supporting device, footbed arch support orthotic, will be placed under this part of the foot. Um, many times, people will ironically be put into rocker soled shoes. You learned just a moment ago is, is actually going to be more harmful for the sesamoids. Sometimes surgery is recommended, uh, either to take out the sesamoid or to do what's called sesamoid planing, where the sesamoid gets basically filed down. Um, many of these more conventional, traditional type therapies are, are geared towards immobilization of the foot as opposed to proper alignment of the foot. I love running, I love running. I love running, I love running. I love running. I love running.